Hello and welcome. I am Karinex, and this is Dark Souls 3. We are back in Fire Lake Shrine, and Luke has come to visit. It's Henri. And in two, Horace the Hushed, of course, with his usual ecstatic dialogue. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. The inside of his helm seems invisible. Anyway, Henri. Semi long time no see. Oh, and we meet again. We spoke before on the road of sacrifices. Henri of Astora. I'm well pleased to see you safe. We reached the Cathedral of the Deep. But Aldrich's coffin was empty. The man-eater must have left for his true home. The little doll in the empty coffin told me. Aldrich is said to hail from Irithyll in the Boreal Valley, an ancient fabled city. A pilgrim told me that the city lies beyond Farren Keep, and so becomes our destination. In the pilgrim. Yeah, that puts quite a different spin on things. Knowing what this will turn out to be. <coughs> hmm. Ah, goodness. Scratchy throat. I should drink some water. Anyway. I'll take a moment to take a look at some of the item descriptions because we have a lot of new items and I don't want to do them all in one episode next time. So we have some rain blue musk lamps which just as the frostbite effect are uh, of course a new remedy for that effect. Musk lamp radiating gentle heat and light. Reduces frost to build up, cures frostbite status as well. Frost accumulates in the body, causing frostbite, which saps one's health, lowers absorption, and slows stamina recovery. Weapons in the frost are a rare thing indeed, most of them originating in the Boreal Valley. Yes, on account of Pontiff Sullivan's efforts. Anyway, it's funny to me that the Moss clump is perfectly blue, of course, so you can easily spot it as the frostbite cure. But as far as the description goes, it's apparently very warm to the touch. Makes sense if it cures frost. But it is an interesting. you know. discrepancy. The dual charms. They're new enough to not have read them, at least. Tool used in duels of judgment. Nulls effects of special area effects for a short time. All Father Lord's knights lived in fear of his duels of judgment, in which verdicts were carried out by his sword of law. This looks like a budget version of the uh, Undead Hunter charm. But yeah. Just like the Undead Hunter charm can block Esther's recovery, this one essentially blocks effects like uh, Vow of Silence and similar spells. We also have the Soul of the Deacons of the Deep, now that I think about it. After Aldrich left for Boreal Valley, Archdeacon Royce remained in the cathedral with the High Priests to keep eternal watch over their master's coffin. Yeah, and those are the three Archdeacons, Royce, Klempt, and McDonnell. There's nothing else in this section that's worth looking at for now. 
let's take a look at his key items though. Because here we have the deep royal divine tome. Belonging to the deacons of the cathedral. Give this to a storyteller to learn miracles of the deep. But we're not going to give this to the arena of course. Intended to teach divine protection to the deacons of the deep. But later dark tales were added to its pages. Such that it is now considered a thing profane. And we have the small dole that we found in Aldrich's coffin. Small silver work dole depicting a young squire. Who would that be, I wonder? Could it be depicting Sullivan? I'm not exactly sure how all of that would work out in a sense of time, but. You know, that's not something to get obstructed by when it comes to Dark Souls lore. Though the broken apart ring in the back kind of forms a crescent, a moon shape as well. Though it just looks like it used to be a ring and it broke to pieces. In the legendary old city of Irithil, situated in the Boreal Valley, the Pontiff Sullivan gave the stole to valued subjects so that they might use it to cross the barrier when they return home. Listen carefully and you can hear it say, Wherever you go, the moon still sets in Irifil. Wherever you may be, Irifil is your home. Well, I suppose Sullivan wouldn't hand out dolls in his own image, would he? So perhaps this represents someone else. Or it doesn't represent anyone uh, as such. Either way, we've got a couple of spells to look at still as well. Spook, of course, being a sorcerer developed by certain surreptitious sorcerer of Inham Dragon School. Masks noise of the cast and prevents fall damage. The master of the sorcerer alone allows the Vinham spooks to demand handsome payment for the services. Yeah, it's basically a combination of what used to be the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, which is still a thing, and the Fall Damage Control spell from the first game. A two-in-one package, which is a good idea. Then we brought all decoy the last time. So it's developed by certain... yeah. The sound carries with it a strange and infectious resonance that may cause one to stray from the post and expose their back. And we found Seek Guidance. That's one of the more fringe miracles that has existed since the first game. Reveal more help and science without using Ember. Hmm. The science one is a new addition, I believe. Previously would only be used to show the like to dislike ratio on player messages basically. Don't remember the first game it would also uh reveal some hidden developer soapstones. Like the ones pointing you toward Aingi below the the Kree like bus fight. At least it's the Chaos Servant Covenant. Anyway, Miracle of Stray Souls. This plays more help from other worlds, and it will summon signs without using an ember. Faith serves as a guide for clerics, meaning they should have no need for second hand wisdom. Be that as it may, this miracle has been passed down from soul to soul, providing a tiny ray of hope for the lost. <laughs> yeah, it's not very useful in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, that's enough reading up for now. There'll still be plenty more time to do so later on. Also, Leonhard, I have done as you implied before. Now invade and kill, and if you grow weary, come on, give. <laughs> but I guess you won't have any new dialogue until I put that covenant on as well. It's something I don't intend to do for some time. I do, however, intend to spend my souls. I 
Let's take a look at what we can turn in the Deacon's soul first. Aha, that returns soon. Anything new to say? No, no we've heard these. Alright, I've got the Deep Soul and the Cleric's Candlestick. Candlestick used as both sword and catalyst. Used to worship by the deacons of the deep. The deacons under the guidance of Antica MacDonnell became both clergymen and sorcerers. Yeah, it's a sword that can also cast sorceries. Not extremely useful, I suppose. It does. It skills of intelligence, but has a faith requirement. That's amusing. And I've got the deep soul. Fire darkened soul sediment. So we saw if Archdeacon Royce and his deacons, said to have been imparted to them by MacDonnell of the Boreal Valley. Souls that swell from the deep, pursue the target drawn towards life. Pretty sure this is a deep sorcery as well, meaning the way this work is, they start moving slowly but gain speed the further they go, making them more difficult to dodge. Best thing, there's basically no damage. I don't know, can I use the weapon out even though I don't meet the faith requirement? I'll have to find out. Treat the firekeeper not with discourtesy. She is much like thee. Prisoners both kept to link the fire. I know. I know. Anyway, I'm just thinking I can't if I can actually use That is not what I wanted to use you for, you know. How do I... Um, two handing the wrong thing. Here we go. I can't. I can't use the weapon out without the faith requirement. Well, that's a shame. Uh, the weapon that would have been interesting because that's basically a Seek Guidance Miracle in Sorcery form. That could actually have been useful in some ways, in some forms. Don't have a lot of tight on a chance right now. How am I looking on you? You would need four to upgrade, you would need six to upgrade, you would need four to upgrade. I'm buying three of them. Alright, well, I'll do what I said I would do earlier and buy some more spells. And then we'll see what is left over. Back again, I see. I suppose. Give me Pestilent Mist. Oh, I have something for you. You're a fine sorcerer now, no mistake. You should have something to prove it. Go on. If I'm giving something away, you better well take it. <laughs> Damn right. The young dragon ring, which boosts sorcery damage. I don't mean to see any in the fall. I hope you come again. Speaking of rings, still have the pound of left eye on, don't really need that right now. I might put the great swamp so bring back on for now. Then again. No, I think this is fine. I did say I want to buy some miracles off of Irene again as well, so we'll do that. 
I'll buy this one and this one because they're cheap. Eight times three is two thousand four hundred. Yeah, it's fine. It is just about fine, but I might not have enough to upgrade. Andre, what would this cost me to upgrade you? Five hundred. All right, well do it and I will buy my uh, remaining three shards <laughs> I'll just sell some items that gives me the remaining 400 uh -huh. sure I have something that I don't need well actually this isn't even a big deal why do we worry about this right now just give me these and whenever I have the remaining 400, I'll come back. So that I can need them immediately. But, since we have new rusty coins now, I'm going to make one quick trip over to the tower on the wall and try my luck once again. What level am I? There, yeah, not you. 42. Three points to go into attunement. But we're effectively done with the uh, Cathedral of the Deep now. So once I come back, I'm probably going to put on my salmon sign for a moment. And see where that gets me. Hmm. You aggro this time. Thank you for the halberd. Already have one though. Anyway, the usual setup meaning we put on the... Where are you? Here you are. Can you come on now? There we go. Uh, I already have one of those. But let's both a try. One day. One day I will find what I am looking for. But not today, it seems, because today we are returning to the cleansing chapel. I still need quite a few more souls. I do intend to be around level 50 by the time I beat the Abyss Watcher, so let's see what we can squeeze out of the Deacon still. Get a quick co-op in as we bring to an end the Cathedral of the Deep. And then remains only the Pharaoh Swamp. A little bit of experience. But back to the cleansing chamber we go first. Because we need to worry about Sigurd's questline as well. We do have the armor. I should probably take a gun at the item description before I... Uh, Get rid of it again. The Yonja Knight armor. Distinctly shaped helm worn by the Knights of Katarina. Often ridiculed for its onion like shape, infuriating the Countess proud knights. But a masterfully forged curve design makes it very effective for deflecting blows. 
same for all four pieces. It's pretty heavy duty armor. It offers even more defense than the Lufric one. Anyway, the reason why we need the armor is... Of course we need to give it back to Sigurd after the Apaches has stolen it. Where's the guy? There's usually a guy patrolling here. Did the patrol all the way down there? What? No, he didn't. <laughs> Where's the guy? The one that sets himself on fire that's usually walking here. Anyway. Hello. Anyone there? Anyone at all? Oh. I know that voice. Just how long has it been? <laughs> Some time. It's me, Siegfried of Katarina. I'm loath to admit it, but I've been had. Someone's swiped my arm. Did you happen to see it anywhere? Yes, I have. Take it. And maybe watch out down there. <laughs> choice until we meet again indeed it is a good favor last time and I would get to pay him back for it yeah maybe we should have dropped my home with a bonus of well though don't you think regardless I am going to put the Sunlight Warrior Covenant on and put my summon sign down here for the grand finale of this area. And we'll see what comes of it, I suppose. Don't really have anything left here. Uh, to do myself though. I expect after this co-op session is over we'll return to the Faron Swamp and focus on actually beating the area this time around. Properly, that is. Meanwhile, I'm just thinking there's nothing else really left in this place, is there? That I could be taking a look at. I'm quite sure we have entirely cleared the Cathedral of the Deep. However, I might as well make my way toward the bus room. I wish you were like the slimes back in Dark Souls 1 to drop your launch titan a chance. Of course, I could definitely use some by now. I don't get the notion to drop anything at all, though.
Oh, that's a lot of Euclid, don't. I really don't want to fight the people up ahead again, though. Maybe I won't have to. Yeah, that works. Just entirely circumnavigate this guy. I uh, broke this one free though, I'm not happy about that. They don't really seem to care about my presence right now though. I don't feel like we're gonna get lucky on uh, something disappeared. Yeah. Let's just get back to the Rosaria bonfire real quick and after that we will move back to the swamp. Should get my trusty way of blue back on then. Oh yeah, good opportunity to look at the staffs. Well, yeah, it looks like they're the same, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks completely the same. Oh, yeah. Can't resist it, can you? <laughs> My sumptuous selection. Well. I don't think there's anything I actually want to buy from you at the moment. I do have the pairing dagger, which is interesting. But I believe I'm fine. Can't find anything you like. Well, you could try looking a little harder. Right, you guys are a concern again. Ah, oh, still alive, are you? That should have been the last of them though. Yeah. Well at least I have the souls at the ready that I'm gonna need to uh, get the... the one Titan chart back so I'm just gonna nap that very quickly. And off the farm swamp we go. It's time to make a race to the Abyss Watchers. The first of the Lords of Cinder that we have to face. The first of them to return to the Moulding Thrones. Just one, thank you. Now then, let's be on our way. And the poison swamps await. Uh, let's start from the beginning since I. Well, we dashed through it last time to get the items we wanted. That I wanted. Didn't really focus on clearing much of the area around here. And there's still a lot of that. Anyway, won't need the fire protection here, but poison protection could be useful. And the same goes for curse protection, but no luck on that front, I'm afraid. Right you are then. We could well try to do some co-op at the beginning of this area, couldn't we? This noxious swamp. 
let me give it a try. Trying this to hurt. Right. Speaking of right, we quite literally want to go right. And go get the golden scroll first of all. Which means we'll be contending with plenty of curse inflicting uh, basilisks. Oh joy. And no caressing tears. Just opposed to what I usually do have. To develop an experience as well. In the deep swamp. Well, basilisks don't have any attacks except for building up a curse meter. So I'm just gonna two hand over here. Uh, you take three hits. That is not ideal. How come you didn't even see me? You did though. Baiting at the jump attack is pretty much the best way to deal with them. Yeah, with the enchantment I need two hits. It's good. So a lot of them are around here though, so they should not be taken lightly. At least they don't inflict normal damage on top of everything else, right? Makes them somewhat more comfortable to deal with. I know you've seen me. Had to risk that one. Still as nasty as last time, I see. Come on, Hazel. Should not have exhausted my stamina entirely against her. But it's done. Splendid. But we need to get further in yet. Elder Guru. These are rather obnoxious enemies as well.
should be in the end of that. This loops somewhere back around, doesn't it? Toward the entrance point to uh, the boss fight. Anyway, we are just here for the golden scroll, though. Which is found in this way. Tears ahead. There's one hell of a bright uh, item. Pick up glow. Look at it. <laughs> the golden scroll. And of course, the antiquated set. Tears ahead. Uh, yeah, I just noticed there's Elizabeth there. Well, what used to be Elizabeth in ages past anyway. This must be somehow tied to Dark Hood Garden than the Farron Swamp. I mean with Anna London being quite literally here in the uh, general vicinity. It doesn't seem like a stretch to me to say that this is somehow built on the remains of what once by the time it used to be Lordran. Anyway, got something else to worry about for now, which is another one of those champers. Uh. Uh, yeah, these guys are nasty. Dark spirit ahead, that's a good point. And they give him back magic flasks, interesting. Home with a bone. There's another one of the Elder Grues down there. Here's a little detail about these guys though, but if you look at them walk, they clearly have claws. Like four or five toed claws. Whereas the other crews all have good like hoofs. Rusted gold coin. I'll take it. Let's go extinguish this brazier, which should be the last one of the three. And then we return to the bonfire because I'm completely out of resources. Sesame. Well, this is ominous. Another elder group. Why are there so many of you in here? Just an exposed rib cage or wearing a rib cage's armor. Good question, right? In any case, I think I'm just gonna home with a bone here. I don't like these guys. I should swap out my pyromancer for something that can be used at the range that would be more useful against them. Tune spell and give him back my fire orb. That reminds me, my profuse sweat would have been useful here as well for the curse persistence. But too late now. In any case, I'm gonna put the uh, way of blue back on. Don't have that much time left that we would be successful with a co op.
Oh, that's good damage. But it'd be a waste of focus. Uh, the one thing I want to get before I end the episode is the ember. Oh, the colds. Been playing too much DS1 again. Tighten that shard. Appreciate it. Quite a few treasures hidden within the depth of the swamp, including the stone palmer. I'm pretty sure that shield is notably better than the silver eagle kite shield we have now. So once I have the strength requirement for it, which is 17 if I'm not mistaken, it could be worth taking a look at. Well, that's a mistake. Here it is. Oh, you actually hit? That's not good. Oh, it's not good. I thought I got the backstab. Okay, uh, thanks for the French kiss. And you hit the second time. You're really trigger happy with that spell. Another mask. Well, it's a third and a half now. Definitely got a couple of spears to sell. In any case, here it is, in the Sage's Coal. Then this is what I came here for. Coal used for weapon infusion. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. The white magic flame produced by this coal was given to the Undead Legion long ago by one of the Crystal Sage twins. Did it just see a uh, invasion thing pop up? No. No, that's nonsense. I would have heard the uh, beep sound from the add on by now. Um, back to what we were doing. Gift to the blacksmith in the shrine to allow the use for gems for crystal, blessed, and dark infusion. Yes, and I believe you have just the right weapon to infuse with blessed as well for when you get to the catacombs of Carthus. And then there's the golden scroll. A golden scroll chronicling the vast research of the Santa Scholars. Gift a sorcerer to learn the art of Ulasil. In the last land of Ulasil, the sorcerer's orchestrated light and was set to shine in golden hues. Yes, they sure did. Anyway, we should be getting back. Uh, just go back the way we came. I would explore most of the other stuff down that way. Ooh, item. More rotten pine reason. Prism stones. Well, there are more useless things than prism stones. Hmm. 
In any case, there's definitely a few more items to pick up in the swamp. But that means contending with uh, the uh, Elder Crews. That'll make for an interesting experience later on. No life ahead. At least the poison is very much tuned down compared to the previous games. It's a nuisance at most, but not as much of a threat as one would assume it to be. In any case, I'm going to give the coal to uh, Andre right off the bat. And of course I'll give the center scroll to Orbeck as well. Ah, well just wasn't it? Here, take this. Well, well. What's the undead legion doing with a coal such as this? Magic. I'd heard one of the crystal sages had sided with Farron's abyss watchers. I suppose it must be true. Oh yeah. It definitely was true. This coal is imbued with magic. First one I've ever seen. Hardly a surprise, is it? I've never been one for books or wise men. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, first one you've ever seen? Nonsense. But then I remembered, yeah, back in DSI, you uh, have to give the magic colds to Rickard. Andrew doesn't take them. Pretty be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. <laughs> Back again, I see. Perfect timing, too. I'm in need of a diversion. Oh, I have just the perfect diversion for you. Oh, my. Well, this is very unusual. It's from Ulysseo, an ancient land of golden sorcerers. Not even the Dragon School possesses such a long-lost scroll. What would the Xanthus scholars say with their ridiculous headwear? <laughs> they would simply slaver over this find. And Hazel was yet so close to it. I don't mean to an exchange of thought, I hope. I've pulled it to already. Hmm, hidden body, cast light. Hidden weapon. I think I'll go get these two real quick. I don't mean to say anything of I hope. It's still not enough, eh? Hey? Trying to get him to uh, give him give me the prompt about being into gimmicks. I don't know how many spells need to uh, gimmick related spells need to buy for that though. Oh chatty wish. Uh don't want anything from you right now. <laughs> I think the rest of my souls I'm going to invest into leveling up. Which is gonna be exactly one level up, I'm sure. 10k, yeah, that is one level up at most. Welcome, husband. Still, I wanted point of attunement. Just two more to go. But I will be leaving it here for the day. So I thank you so much for watching. And someone landed on the very top of that throne. Congratulations. Anyways, I'll see you around.